This is Lauren. This is Trey. And this is the Partnership Podcast. Ooh, hey, you're back again? Crazy. Today we are talking about how to initiate sex primarily in long-term relationships. I've been with my first wife for five years now, so we count. Then ever so briefly, we get into like casual dating or like, I don't know, friends with benefits. Enjoy. We don't like that. Definitely don't put that in there. So yeah, don't put that in there. We're not putting any of that in there. Good morning. <clears throat> Good morning. <laughs> we tried to podcast yesterday. We did not afternoon, late evening. <laughs> We're just not. We post- did another. Yeah, we did another like three o'clock. And what was my vibe? Baby, you just looked <laughs> so sleepy. Your, your battery's done. You had a really productive day. Mm-hmm. Hooray. And you just looked done the whole time, which I don't know if the audience would even pick up on. So please hear me my body picks up on it. And so then I think I temper what I do, Mm -hmm. which is not your fault, but it is my human design's fault. Like, I don't know, it's like, I just envisioning pulling more out of you than you have to give. Got it. And I don't, it doesn't feel good. Cool. Even these times where I know you're like, we're all still waking up because it's early. Mm -hmm. I'd so much rather, yeah, have gentle conversations now. I could just feel myself getting on the defensive or like trying to overcompensate. I was like, this is not good. Okay, yeah, I'm glad we're doing it again. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. So we've done podcasts in the past about sexual initiation. You might remember where we told the story of me throwing these slippers at you. I was thinking about that the other day. Do you want to remind the audience? that was funny. Okay. (laughs) Because we have new listeners. So, guys, uh, there was a time where it was like sexy time in the house, and we have a basement. So sometimes we like to go down there and uh, make love to each other Mm -hmm. vigorously. And there's a big mirror, too, and it's hot. Um, I also use it for golf. (laughs) It's a multi-purpose facility. It's a a multi-purpose mirror and facility. (laughs) I mean, we're transformers. Our basic warehouse is transformers. Mm -hmm. So um, I am upstairs doing something, and I come running down the stairs, uh, and it's dark. And Lauren has these hand. Can you hand me one of those? So Lauren has these slippers, and they are brown slippers. They're what are they, what are these called? Moccasins. Yeah, moccasins, and they got the like fur on the sides. They look great. And um, in a attempt to be like really like sexy and spontaneous, Lauren throws both of these at the wall where I'm running down, and. Um, I see them as two wild animals that make a gigantic noise against the wall in a dark room, and I just go, motherfucker! And my entire nervous system is now in fight mode, flight Mm -hmm. mode, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Because I read it as two, (laughs) I don't know, like squirrel predators in our house. And um, what happens next, babe? (laughs) The reason I had thrown these things is I thought it'd be fun to do a little strip tease. So this was my attempt at a strip tease. We know I will keep my day job. <laughs> that, that was not good. Yeah. So now I am completely naked. It wasn't just my slippers that I tossed. I thought I tossed, y'all, and I belted. Um, I tossed my slippers and all my clothes. And so I'm now naked against the wall as Trey is screaming and crouching. And so we're both just looking at each other like, well, what do we do now? Because uh-huh. Lauren's naked and Trey's petrified. Correct. So that is our lesson and not to, like how not to initiate sex. Scare the other person Scare first. Boo. the other person. <laughs> so Boo, are you still we, horny? <laughs> we had to do a whole thing to calm down Trey's nervous system. And he was like, I just want chocolate. He kept saying, I just want eggs and chocolate. That's what I kept saying? Because yes. usually if I want to calm down my nervous system, I'm trying to fuck. No, but, but you were like, I just want eggs and chocolate. I think it's literally on the podcast. I'll, I'll link it for YouTube. It'll be like up here in the Spotify and Apple. I'll put it down in the captions. Um, Oh, my God. Yeah. So we calmed each other down and we ended up having some great lovemaking. It but, took a while to Oh, like, yes, it did. Because, uh, yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't get a. I couldn't get hard. The the body when it's in <laughs> fight and flight and freeze and fawn, it's Shoe not mode. like now's the time to copulate. 
body's not like, now's a great time to be naked. No, that's not what it says. Terrifying. <laughs> Terrifying. So that's not a good way to initiate sex is to, but like, hey, FFT and like, ouch, my bad. You weren't doing it on purpose. It's like, let me get out of this. <laughs> I don't want to fucking have sex. Let me get out of this. Oh, my God. And you could have said, I'm going to make you some eggs, baby. I'm so sorry. I think I did. I was like, we could stop right now. Like, Mm -hmm. I'm making eggs. Like, and let's do some of our breathing exercises. We do this deep. Yeah, you didn't call me a pussy. No. Tell me to get in there. No. (laughs) Which is a Which is a kink. Also, we had like an hour between my clients or something. This is also what we were doing. Yeah. And so on the episode, I talk about how I was trying to get into my sexy because I had just been in like work mode. Mm-hmm. And so I was thinking of that look at me sexual initiation style. And I thought, oh, this will be good. Like I'll like drape myself against the wall and like look sexy. Yes. I th- I was really trying to turn myself on because I do take a personal responsibility in that. Mm-hmm. And inadvertently. Turn- do you like do loud noises turn <laughs> you on, honey? Like loud noises in the dark? My husband's screaming shortly. Does that Certainly help your tingle not. time? <laughs> no. No. Just shadows, dark <laughs> shadows lurking. Is that what really gets the the coos going? No. Okay. That's not good. Which is ironically kind of what I'd love us to talk about today. I'd love us to talk about some of our most tried and true forms of sexual initiation mm. now in this version of partnership. Which do we get to call ourselves long term partners now? Like are we have we reached the long term status? What is it? Like four years? How long have we been together? We Four met in 2019, years? October 2019. What's the math on that, babe? I panic if it's on the spot. I go, it's going to be five years fuck, in October. Fuck. Okay, I had to five count years on my in October? <laughs> yeah, I think we're long-term partners. Anyway, I would love to talk about some of your favorite ways that we initiate sex at this stage of partnership. Yeah. And then we can both share some opportunities that we had for growth, ways in which we did not initiate sex well. Um, or in stories in which somebody else tried to initiate sex with us, not well. Go ahead. I love it. How we initiate sex as long-term partners mm-hmm. versus like just getting to know each other mm-hmm. versus like a casual hookup. Okay, yeah. cool. I have clients all the time who have beautiful relationships with their partner. And it's almost so beautiful that no one wants to like rock the boat. And so they're sitting over there on the other side of the couch, really wishing they could be intimate. But they don't really know how to bring it up and they don't really want to change the dynamic. They don't want the other person to then reject them. They're like, we're watching a movie, which feels fine. Like it feels fine and great. I would love to have sex, but I don't know how to move to the next level. Wow. Okay, baby. That's really interesting. Honey, what does rejection or rejection is a strong word. What does like in our partnership saying no, I can't right now look like for us currently? I th- we have done th- this is some of the work that we have done on the back end is really work on sexual privacy and sexual agency so that if one of us is not in the mood for a partnered sexual encounter, we can fully and freely give a kiss and say, but go have fun. Mm-hmm. I do not view it as my responsibility to take care of your all of your orgasmic needs. I do not. Um I also know, and correct me if I'm wrong, that you would want me to enter into partnered sexual encounters with you in a place of true wanting, Mm. place of true desire. Mm -hmm. And this might be like, I don't know, what do they call it? Jumping the shark. That sometimes you will say to me, hey, baby, what does your schedule look like today? Is there anywhere we could sneak in some basement lovemaking? Sometimes there is. Sometimes I know the type of client load I'm going to have, like, yes, there is an hour, but I could also use that hour to get client homework done. So then I wouldn't be doing it late into the night. And old Lauren long ago would have felt so guilty for that. Like I was choosing work over you. This new iteration of myself knows that you are truly asking, you're truly asking and would want me to show up fully and freely. And, and it's okay. I need to, I need to really think about, that's my job. My job is to think about, would I be able to show up full body? Um, Would I be able to truly invest in my lover? Would I be distracted about the work I really wanted to finish? Because you deserve deserve good stuff from me. Also, 
you do such a good job. Part of your job is not shaming me or mm. putting a negative thing on me if it's like I got a crumb and move on with my day. So it's I it's, say if I initiate. Say I've never I, heard that phrase. I'm having a hard time keeping a straight face over here. If I'm trying to fug, say. It's good. Can we take it? Yeah, I'm serious. Can we take it serious? Yeah. So if I'm if I'm trying to crumb hard, um, you don't say like, why aren't you waiting for me? Or oh yeah, or like why why would you do that? I don't get I don't get almost shamed mm -hmm. because sometimes friends friends of the show we just need to come mm -hmm. and then move on with our day. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I will. Uh, I I don't see it as rejection. Well, I see it as like um, you're busy, or or we could, what what's the term that we use? We we could set up an opportunity for play, mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. for sex, but mm -hmm. for play later in the evening. Okay, so I do a good job. What? How do I do a praise me? But don't praise me. How do I do a good job in helping you feel not rejected, but like supported in your masturbatory practice? Um, I don't get shame for it. Okay, so lack of shame. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. Lack of like, uh, yeah, I don't like, um, yeah, just that's that's a great way to say it. Lack of shame. Okay. Or lack of like, that's bad. You don't hit me with it. That's bad. Why aren't you waiting for me? Sometimes you'll ask like, hey, can you save it for me yeah. like, later this yeah. evening? And sometimes I will, but sometimes I'll say we can have sex like later this evening. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like yeah. sometimes... In a given day, I know that my day ends at such and such and that I'd actually love some space for play. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes I will say that to you. Like, well, I was hoping to have sex later, but, you know, if you think you can put out twice. Yeah. And we'll make it kind of cute. Like, Correct. Yeah. Like, but then what I was going to say to you is on that exact vein, so perfect, is that I try not to shame because I think that your orgasmic experiences are yours. And then you do such a good job of not then withholding affection from me for the rest of the day mm, yeah. sometimes somebody says i can't right now and then zoom oh interesting where it's almost like that's like a punishment oh that stinks yeah yeah that stinks i wouldn't why don't you hold withhold affection from me when i because you're not holding withholding affection from me okay I don't. I definitely don't want to reciprocate that, or I don't want to receive it, and then I don't want to reciprocate. When you say no, it's because you have other things to do, or you're just not in the fucking mood, mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. And when we're not in the mood, generally we are. Our minds or our bodies are focused on different tasks mm -hmm. or a bunch of different tasks. Mm -hmm. I mean, ask me if I want to have sex. If I have like seven different things I want to accomplish before I need to be out the door by one mm -hmm. to accomplish another mm -hmm. seven different mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. That's almost like, you know what, I, I will want sex, but I I don't want it with you. Say I'll, I'll, I'll want sex to actually relieve stress. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Where it's like masturbate real quick, mm -hmm, come, mm -hmm. like, and then move on with my day. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. I think it would be a different story. I think I would become fearful. Isn't this interesting to see this loop? If my no equaled withholding, mm. that is a loop that so many clients get in. Oh. And we are just, my loves, and emulating things that we have seen out in the world or in our parents' homes. Okay, sexuality educator. So let's just say that's the scenario where I feel, say if I initiate and mm -hmm. I get a no or I get rejected and I feel like I need to withhold mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. because you have said no to my vulnerable mm -hmm. invitation. Mm -hmm. What tools, as a straight white male, what tools would you give me mm -hmm. that I could use with my imaginary babe that's not you? The tool of curiosity and question asking. First and foremost, when someone says no, they are standing in their agency. That does not mean we cannot negotiate a different, better, more loving and exciting time to have a partnered sexual encounter. Say, let's take it back to the watching the movie on the couch scenario. We're watching a movie, babe, this movie is getting me kind of turned on. What do you think about fooling around, you know, while we watch it type of thing? 
You know, thank you so much for asking. I've had such a long day. I'm so enjoying this moment, like sitting here with you in my pajamas. I feel warm and cozy. Is it okay if we don't right now? Of course, of course, of course. Just know how much I want you. When's the next time we could pencil something on like this? That's hot. Right? Oh, you want me? How do you want me? Right? What this does, I'm not saying that you need to manipulate your partner into having a sexual encounter right then. I'm not. But what does start to happen is... We start to talk about this. Oh, well, you know what? Maybe tomorrow morning before we get out of bed, like, you know, I need to be at work at nine. But what if we set our alarms for a little earlier and got up in the morning? Oh, okay. Or actually, I was planning on coming home on my lunch break tomorrow, especially if you keep telling me how you want me. Okay, this is everybody's opportunity to negotiate. We all have needs, wants, and desires. We just have to speak them up. Oh, well, if you come home on your lunch break, well, that's really fun. Like, what if I set up the bed for, oh, that sounds really exciting, right? It becomes this, the place to play that we were talking about and allows for both parties to share their desire for the other. I don't think that a no now in this moment means no, not forever. And yet it can feel like that Mm. in our bodies because you're so right. It is vulnerable. No, I don't want you. That's how it reads. No, I don't want you. It does. Mm -hmm. And listen, as a person who asked for sex for 10 years, it is so painful. So, so painful to be rejected. I thought everything was wrong with me. I, I started controlling everything in my life so that I could be more desirable. Cat's out of the bag. My ex-husband is now happily gay it had nothing to do with me but those years of rejection did such damage to my psyche so i hear everybody out there who's like that is the scariest thing in the world i hear it Mm -hmm. know that the other ways to practice that can feel a little safer are non-sexual requests non-sexual acts um you can practice in that way. Three minute games, a great way to practice negotiation too. Um, and I know Trey and I keep talking about this, but ask for space and time to play as opposed to spontaneous encounters. There is such a myth in the society that the best sex is like spontaneous sex. And it's just not true. Most of us, especially in longer term relationships, I'd even argue it's the same thing in casual hookups. Love the sex most when it's anticipated. When you were casually dating, I want everybody to think back to it. You anticipated the sex, the possible sex after the dinner date. You schemed about it. You maybe manscaped or you ladiescaped. Mm-hmm. And you like thought about where you'd put this person. You thought about what their mouth would taste like. This is anticipatory desire. This is responsive desire. This is not spontaneous desire. So when people tell me it literally happens all the time. I want to be more spontaneous. I'm like, name a time you were spontaneous. They name the time, and then I give them all the things that they were looking forward <laughs> to. I'm like, it was not freaking spontaneous. Yeah. It was planned and anticipated and long term. And they probably accidentally did a bunch of things that do 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 turned on their partner. That made and it then, so exciting. Yeah, built built that up, yeah. and then they got to explode together. Yeah, sure. Does like sexy um, couch sex happen while you're watching a movie? Sometimes, hundred percent. And I'd even argue that maybe it was the movie turning you on. Or maybe it was the way your partner was like stroking your leg like this. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it was that really yummy conversation you guys had earlier. And you're just thinking about, oh my gosh, I am so fulfilled sitting here with my partner. They bring me so much joy. Or maybe it was the way they like picked up your kid and put them in their bed that evening. These are all responsive things. (laughs) These are not spontaneous things. So... Yeah, maybe your partner does initiate and you are like, oh, I was really comfortable watching the movie. You can, if you don't want to say no, you could say, why? And they could then respond with, you look so sexy sitting over there. I just keep thinking about how I was watching you make dinner and I just love the way your ass wiggled as you're like bending over into the oven. Well, my gosh, that makes it a little more exciting than, you know, Joe's on one side, Jane's on the other side of the couch. They haven't taught, touched through the whole first 30 minutes of the movie. And then he turns to her and says, want to have sex? She's like, what? I've been mm-hmm. watching the movie. Mm-hmm. I know I got a little nuance there. Did that make any sense? No, it makes perfect sense. Build anticipation in long-term relationships. And no doesn't mean no forever. Mm-mm. Yeah. And then, yeah, there's some, okay. The tools 
when you hear no, any other tools mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for when you hear no? And also, it's not manipulative. Mm -mm. The the example that you gave like five minutes ago that that's not manipulative. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Yeah, it's just kind of sharing what's in your imagination. It's sexy. It's not manipulative. Yeah. It's freaking sexy to tell your partner, okay, not now. How about tomorrow at noon? I pick you up from work and we get some lunch and then we have a makeout in the back car seat of the car. Mm -hmm. That's not manipulative. That's freaking sexy. Mm -hmm. People will say, they will often throw back to, I don't know, it's just so easy in college, yada, yada. And I'll be like, tell me about an encounter. And then they tell me about some make out in the back of the car. And I'm like, that's hot. Why don't you do that? And they're like, well, I can't now. Why do people get away from doing hot stuff in long-term relationships? Because I think we have some ridiculous societal standards that like we're supposed to be big, mature adults and we forget how to play. Okay. Yeah. And we... Rightly so, know that play takes a little bit of freedom and space and joy. And so then we get our lives bogged down with so many to do's, right? We've got to get this child here and that here. And yeah, we don't make time for play. Or do people in long term relationships stop dating each other? Yeah. And, and you know, is it a date? I guess it would be a date. And I think we also have such a narrow view of dating we think that means going to dinner what if it means hiking a mountain together what if it means walking around the park what if it means going to a park bench and sitting and watching the couples and like trying to imagine their stories i we make dating so inaccessible and it's like it's just hanging out with someone you like and people will say all the time, well, their love language is quality time. Mine is physical touch. Like, I don't need that quality time. And first of all, Nicole LaPera highlights this on how to be the love you seek. I love love languages, and I also hate them. We all deserve all forms of love and affection. Most of us just learned how to do without some of them because we didn't get them as children. Mm. I challenge all our listeners to expand your love language palette. Get to the buffet. Start experiencing what quality time actually could give you. Start experiencing what physical touch actually could give you. And start to expand your palette and whoa, you might have some fun. So enough of this, well, I don't need quality time or I don't need physical touch. Yes, you do. <laughs> You're a human being with needs. Enjoy it and start to take it for yourself as well. Okay, but back to the tools for the no. I would also say it's okay to say, thank you for telling me no. I really am glad that you stood in your agency right there. Good job. Good job. Like really proud of you. I think we oftentimes forget that there was probably fear of rejecting a loved one in that moment. And so just saying, I appreciate that you tell me when you do want to have sex and when you don't want to have sex. <laughs> this is how much Trey loves loud noises. <laughs> it's almost done. Almost done. Almost done. Um, I appreciate you being authentic with me. Thank you for telling me no. Talk about sexy. I, re I respect your agency. Great job. If it's, <clears throat> if it's like coming from a place of like authenticity and genuineness, okay. It's very hot. Mm -hmm. If a man says that to a woman, you're going to get laid a lot faster than you think. We had to work through this early on. I Because I had so many years of rejection, I yeah. was really afraid of rejecting you. I don't know if you remember this conversation. Um, we had it early on when like we reconnected. And I said, can I share something with you? I love doing my morning journaling and having alone time in the morning. And I know it is your favorite time to have sex. And I don't really know how to reconcile these two. Mm. I feel guilty, mm -hmm. and these, this is on me, please hear ownership. I f f felt feelings of guilt that if I got out of bed to go do my sacred morning practice, be alone, that I was in some way withholding sex from you. And that was a tender conversation. It was really tender. What did I say? <laughs> Baby, get out of bed. <laughs> you 
were like, you were like, it makes me feel horrible that you've stayed in bed when you want and need that morning practice yeah, so much. You were like, I don't like that. Don't stay in bed. No. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was so... <laughs> Yeah, it's like I want the full meal. I don't want leftovers. Yes. And I thought, oh, shit, that's right. Like, yeah. Do Is arousal the coolest thing? If you stay present, does my body get aroused and then want the orgasm? Of course it does. That doesn't mean that I'm not in the back of my mind kind of sad. Distracted. Yeah. yeah. Like, I really love my morning practice. And... Part of that has to do with finding me before I am with other. And so to be with other so quickly, I start to lose my whole like trajectory for my day. Now on like a vacation morning, I love it. I don't care. I'll go do it later. It is, they're calling it Herkel, Herkel Durkel time. It's like this whole thing going around. I guess it's a, somebody tell me it's some phrase in some country of when you like kind of like lay around in bed for a while. Herkle Durkle time? I don't like it. You're going to love it. You're going to start using it. I'm never going to say that again. <laughs> Just like you were never going to say tingle time again. Or Somebody use emojis. Go back. <laughs> you do use emojis sometimes, very rarely. Um, does that make sense? Like sometimes I don't want you to think the times we do have sex in the morning that I'm miserable. I do like it sometimes, mm-hmm. but I have complete permission from you to stand in my agency. Yeah, of course. And it's pretty cool. I wouldn't want it any other way. Okay, that is good for mm-hmm. long-term relationships. Mm-hmm. What about for like dating mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. like friends with benefits? Yeah. I've been thinking on this since we kind of like started chewing on how we should talk about this subject. And I think question asking is just the sexiest thing in the world. Like I've been thinking about all these phrases you could text a casual hookup or a friend with benefit or someone like you're all dating multiple people, you know, like you're in a season of openness Um, or you're even in early stages of maybe like dating boyfriend, boyfriend or girlfriend, girlfriend. Commitment. Early stages of like, I see this going somewhere. Yeah, exactly. Like you guys have had some form of like define the relationship, but you're like, you're kind of... And that's the assumption that you've been intimate together too. Yeah. 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 Okay. So we've got like three different categories, but they're all newish. They are not this yeah. seasoned long-term partnership yeah. that Trey and I have. <laughs> get your old lady in the bed next to you. Because so many people say, like, how do I make it clear that like we're starting to fall into routines or we're starting to do this or that? How do I make it clear that I want sex? And I think questions are still the sexiest thing, which... Shout out is how three minute game starts too. How would you like to be touched? Right. How would you like to touch me? I think it could be, Hey, I can't wait to see you tonight. What types of things like I'm really looking forward to tasting your body. What sounds good to you? Mm -hmm. This is through text. This is through text. That's hot. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. I don't think I've ever gotten one of those before. Oh, I will hit you with one of those. Thank you. I love the, taste and smell of your body thank you Mm. much appreciated Mm. i like you too (laughs) let's continue with this one trey has said this to me since the beginning maybe you've done this with everyone i don't know but i would like confess some like deep adoration or like hunger for him and he'd be like thank you i like Mm. you too i've done that with everyone you're just (laughs) you're just another you're just another another notch on the another notch um so questions right um Hey, can't wait to see you later. What are you in the mood for? Um, I'm really. What open. are you in the mood for when it comes to sex? Well, I think it could start with that. What are you in the mood for? Okay. And then somebody could say, "Oh, a movie." Ooh, ooh. My only thing is, say, like, if you're a man and if you're like leading an interaction, don't ask. I I hear you on. Can I challenge you on something? Sure. I hear you on. You're the man. And I hear where you're coming Ooh, from. I'll take I, that away. I'll take you that away. You know what I'm saying? I you're think it, leading the you, date. You're the one planning the date. Can we say that? Okay. I'm now a non-binary Ken doll, so I okay. don't have a penis. Great. And I don't have a vagina. Awesome. Don't fucking put a vagina on me. Okay. And my name is, I don't know, blank. So if you are, genderless aside, good. masculine, feminine aside, if you are leading the interaction. Love it. Have a plan. Yeah. Yeah, I get back. Because yes. if you want to fall into routine real quick or if you want to uh, you know, dry up whatever you're trying to get wet, 
or ask, hard. Ask like, what do you want to do? Yeah, do that if you're just trying to dry okay. up yeah. like a yeah, desert. Yeah. Okay, cool. Then, so early on in dating and partnership, have a plan. regardless of gender, love this, where we're going with this, decide who's leading the date. We do this all the time. Mm-hmm. We'll be like, hey, let's do a date. Are you leading? Am I leading? Mm-hmm. A, super fun to plan. <laughs> super fun to plan a date. B, then you know who's leading and who's supporting. And then the leader can say, hey, I am planning this, this, and this. Um, yeah, does does this sound good to you? Don't ask that. Well, I what I'm trying to say is that questioning, I don't want people to feel like they have to give sex. So you feel Oh, no, this I'm talking about me. like going to bowling and then getting <laughs> drinks. Okay, okay, I'm not okay, talking okay. about sex, although okay. that is hot too. But you need to, you need to ask permission for that. Like yeah. if I want to if I want to put on a, a sexual menu, just ask permission. Ooh. Yeah. That's that's a phrase we use in sex school. Sexual okay. menu? Yeah. Um mm, appetizers. Ooh. So Dessert. that that would be fun Aim. of you don't have to use that cheesy phrase if you don't want to, but you could say, this is the date that I have planned, this isn't this, and then the sexual menu is up for you to choose from. But imagine actually doing it like on a PDF and then hitting somebody with a QR I, code. Well, I have yes, no, maybe lists. You can hit me up and we can talk about this. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's do a sexual menu. Okay. I want to make Holland make one, but like... Let's have yeah, let's for force us. Holland to make our sexual menu. Well, when I say that, she is so much better at doing these things. Sorry, Holland. Love you, Holland. I don't mean that. You will make the sexual menu. I'm going to I prison. mean that if Holland heard this in this real time, she'd be like, already have written it down, mm-hmm. already be like, it's on the way, because that's how Holland is. Um, yeah, that's yummy. I like speaking of sexual menu. That's yummy. If... If that was a part of the thing too. Okay. So that works for people you're dating. Mm -hmm. If it's casual hookup culture, which is not detrimental. People will say like, is this ruining relationships in America? I Can we set up a scenario? Okay. Mm -hmm. We meet, both of us meet online. Mm. Um, We're, I don't know, texting back and forth through the app or we get each other's phone numbers. Say if we just want to keep it. Mm-hmm. Casual, casual and sexual. As a, without ever like talking to someone on the phone or like going on a date. I don't know how that works. How does that? <laughs> you're not gonna take somebody on a date or like go out and meet them for a drink. You're just gonna go over to like a stranger's house. Why does it feel so foreign to you? You're making so many great faces. I've never, I've never practiced, like I've never practiced that. I don't even think in my 20s. Mm-hmm. I think one time, no, there was one time I went straight over to like a girl's house mm-hmm. and we ended up making out and that was it. But I was like, this doesn't feel right. Mm-hmm. So I don't know how that works mm-hmm. if you're not going to, do you remember Jurassic Park? Mm-hmm. Jeff Goldblum, very accomplished uh, film actor. He had a famous line where they brought out a goat for the T-Rex mm-hmm. because, you know, mm-hmm. let's get the T-Rex. And he goes, T-Rex doesn't want to be fed. T-Rex wants to hunt. Mm. Do mm. you want to put mm-hmm. in the effort to build anticipation or do you want to scout the other person to see if you would like to smush genitals together? Or do you want to just like, do you want to be fed where you want to just go over and I don't get it. Mm -hmm. I don't get not taking another person out Mm -hmm. or talking to them on the phone to Mm -hmm. see even if you want to, if Mm -hmm. they qualify. Mm -hmm. Plenty of, plenty of potential romantic relationships have stopped at the phone. Mm -hmm. Both ways. Mm -hmm. It's like, I didn't have a good vibe there Mm -hmm. and they didn't have a good vibe on me. Mm -mm. And that was it. It was great. The fuck were we talking about again? I know. Jurassic just, Park? Yeah, and I'm just so turned on by your... Jeff, Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, no, I think, you know, I think your point is fascinating. I think that, you know, I I love systems work and I I would love to change the whole system of how we all do this. And yet I know, I know that I have sexted with someone, no phone call, and then gone to their place for sex. They made me dinner and even from the moment I met them and they gave me a hug, I was like, oh, this is this is not going to work, right? The chemistry in person is not Whoa. the same as, 
yeah. texting and sending pictures, right? Yeah. Okay. And That's vulnerable. Thank you for sharing that, honey. Yeah. How was the sex? Not great. On a scale of 1 to 10? It was... Let me lay the groundwork here. It was safe. It was consensual. Cool. It was totally fine. It met my human need of connection and being naked with someone. And it was pathetic. Three? Yeah. So Rough. everybody hear me. I knew I could leave it. In, in fact, this person before we smushed genitals was like, do you want to leave? Whoa. Oh, shit. And then if you could have gone back, if you could have hopped in the DeLorean, you would have. I think so. But you just needed you needed physical connection. I really did. Good. I was hungry. Good for you. And then I met you like two weeks later, so mm-hmm. moral of the story is. And did we send any, did we do any sexting or send any no. scandalous pictures to each other? No, I sent one selfie and Trey goes, nice fanny pack. Uh-huh. You sent me a bathroom selfie and you had a fanny pack on. That mm-hmm. was the only thing I could see in that photo. Yeah. Yes, you're a stunning woman, but I was like, does this woman have a fanny pack on? It was like a business fanny pack, y'all. That's when fanny packs were first coming on. Business fanny pack? It was honey? so sexy. It was so cute. I got lots. It's of appropriate for the office. Yeah, it was like <laughs> it's cute. I was at a conference, so I sent him that picture. I think I sent him a couple pictures, and I just always got back some comments about my like. I sent you run one with that like cozy sweater that I wear sometimes right before we met the next day, mm-hmm. and you were like cozy sweater, or you like thumbed up the photo or mm-hmm. something. Mm-hmm. Um, you would ask me questions via text and stuff. Mm-hmm. You answered like, a couple of them because we were like building momentum to like get to know each other. But yeah, no, you but would we had a phone call. No, we had a phone call and then I kind of politely told you to fuck off. You were like, save it for the date. I'll Can we you. save it for the date? I'll see you on the 26th. Exactly. I'll see you on the 26th. I'll see you on the 26th. Exclamation point. Kindly fuck off. I'm busy. Mm. It's so funny, y'all. I was casually seeing or talking to like You're four, sexing a lot four or of five men. guys mm-hmm. when I met Trey. And it's just so funny to see my notebook where I'm like crossing them off because right the night before I met Trey, like three of them had been like, you are just too much for me. Hmm. Like, this is never going to work. Like, you're just so much. And so that I circle Trey's name and I'm like, California boy, like the only one left on this list. Like this. (laughs) Well, (laughs) chances are slim. You're going to be going back to the drawing board as soon as you get back from California. So have fun with him. Yeah. Hilarious. Here we are now. We treated our date like, I don't know. Well, like the last night on earth or something. It's like, fuck it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, let's do it. Let's have fun. So to that, you know, we'll wrap this up. But I think even in. Casual dating, you could still ask questions. You can still plan the date away. I do love that. Like, talk about who's going to plan the date, even if you're casually dating. Hey, you know, I'll plan this date. You want to do the next one? That's, yeah. That's, full, yeah. Okay, that's if you really like somebody. Eh, I'm like, I don't know why I'm qualifying it. Yeah. I think I, that's good advice. I think that'd be good. Pardon, I, I think, think that's that'd good, be good advice. Um, it's not something that I would do, but that doesn't mean that it's not good advice. Good. Yeah. Cool. Um, I think that if you meet someone randomly on an adventure, I've had several people, this happens all the time to my clients, y'all, shout out sex ed for you. They start learning who they are as a sexual being, then they go on vacation. This has happened, no lie, several times in the last two weeks. My clients have gone somewhere tropical. And then they have met somebody who sees them in their sexual power. Got it. And then they have ended up having a vacation fling. Mm. I'm here for it. Okay. That's how we met. Yes. And it feels so new that then they come back needing more tools. So some of the tools we've been talking about is I wanted this sex. Like they went in intuitively knowing it was going to be good, safe sex. They were with other people. Everybody knew where they were. This wasn't dangerous. Nobody was leaving the resort. What it wasn't was like orgasmic for them, for the person with the vulva. So I think keep feeling into that intuition. It is okay even in the midst of a sexual encounter to keep asking for what you want. And if this person doesn't take coaching, then like, I don't know, like that's on them, not on you, not on you. Um, So I would say in those events, if men are conditioned to fear failing sex, 
and women are conditioned to fear sex. People in male bodies who are hetero, who are fucking women, it's okay to ask, hey, 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 tell me how I can pleasure you. Oh, it's hot to ask. Yeah. It's encouraged to ask. So that's what I was trying to get to the question parts. And you were like, no, lead, lead, lead. I think that I keep thinking it's for the actual like going out. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, the let's bedroom. get to the, the bedroom Pardon part. Me. No, it's totally fine. Pardon me. Um, no, that's asking super questions encouraged. is so so hot. Yeah. If you are laying by the pool with your like love interest, you could totally say to them, "Hey, I cannot stop thinking about you. How would you like me to take you back to the room?" Do you like, know what's Do you know what's also hot for a first time encounter? Uh, talking about consent, talking about where you like to be touched, where you don't like to be touched. Is mm-hmm. there anything like? you really love is there any kind of no zones on your body yeah that's hot and it's okay to be whoever in whatever body leading that conversation Mm -hmm. too i think that so often we still have these odd gender roles so again if you no matter what your relationship dynamic is thruple couple it is okay to say hey you know what i think would be fun they're like what if we each ask for a certain area that we want to be touched like i don't know your body let's mm-hmm. explore a little bit mm-hmm. right i'm gonna ring you know i'm gonna draw my hands over your body you tell me to stop where it's an area that feels really good mm-hmm. i don't know you right yeah. I, there are so many fun ways to play into consent right tell me where it does not feel good right some people yeah. don't like oral sex and so going down on them is not going to be the thing they love or they don't like being touched in certain areas because they feel yes. uh, unpretty or yeah. unhandsome in those areas and that's, and that's you're, quite vulnerable it is vulnerable and on your yeah. vacation fling is not the time to heal somebody else's body wounds no it could be the time to give them a really good orgasm now mm-hmm. and that's hot so i know we've been saying like lead and do all these things but i questions curiosity questions curiosity even on a booty call, okay? It's a really good foundation. Yeah. You don't have to have all the answers. And fuck, this shit is nuanced. But that's a wonderful foundation. Mm-hmm. So even booty calls, even friends with benefits, hey, you want to come over, right? In quotes or something. Mm-hmm. They come over and it's like, okay, I've been craving you, but what do you want? Could be do so a text hard. message with that. Oh, I've been craving you. Would you like to come over? Uh-huh. Or do you have time? Right. Do you have space? I really need to explore your body. Mm-hmm. Hot. Mm-hmm. Versus some type of like veiled type of, mm-hmm. do you want to watch a movie? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Show yeah. a little confidence. Show a little confidence. Anybody in give, anybody. Give someone else the opportunity to say no. And yeah. then if they say no, what you say is no problem. Let me know when you're free. Yeah. Because that craving is not going away. And then yeah. don't text them back. Yeah. Wait for them to text you. I understand that the making it elusive protects the vulnerability a little bit. I do. Making it elusive, what do you mean? A booty call, a friends with benefits hangout, veiling the desire for sex makes it a little safer. Like, well, if I didn't say we were going to have sex, yes. Mm -hmm. I just would say it's attractive when someone says what they want. Correct. And then... Gives an, a possibility for someone to say, you know, I also want that, but I don't want to do it in our bedrooms. Like, I want to do it on the couch or something, right? We're all kinky, lovely people deep inside, mm-hmm. right? Ask, ask boldly. And then just like Trey said, if, if like, if you get a no, awesome. Totally okay. Thank you for sharing with me. Let me know the mm-hmm. next time you're craving me. Mm-hmm. Boom. Leave it at that. And then don't text back. Don't say, are, are you ready? Are you craving me? Don't yeah. do that. Just wait. Mm. Let's wrap it up. Okay, this was a sexy conversation, and now I've got to go to the gym and work day. But listen, I can't tell you what's going to happen later today. Thanks for coming to this episode of the Partnership Podcast with Lauren and Trey. These are opinions. Sure, there's a ton of research in the back of my mind that is informing these opinions, but I really encourage you to do what works for you. As a reminder, you have a right to self-determination and informed decision-making. Trey said it constantly, but what is right for us might not be right for you, and that's good. That's good. 
Um, if you would like to work with someone on styles of sexual initiation and how to be a better question asker, all that juicy stuff, you can go to sexedforyou.com forward slash free consult and request a consult with moi. If, on the other hand, you're like, no, I don't want to work with Lauren, but I do want some of those worksheets she was talking about, I think everything that I mentioned today is at sexedforyou.com forward slash shop, and I think they're like 15 bucks. You can get a worksheet of your own, and yes, we will request kindly for Colin Holland to make us a um, sexual menu, because that'd be fun. Have a great day, y'all. Bye.